To put it bluntly, grappling is easy in D&D 5e. No incomprehensible grappling charts, no feet trees to make it work. If you want to put a wizard in a headlock, you can just go ahead and do it. But just because it's easy doesn't mean there isn't room to master it, and that's what today's episode is all about. For those of you unaware, grappling is a game mechanic that essentially means grabbing someone. It's a catch-all that covers every form of wrestling, headlocking, or general bullying you can think of. Once you've grabbed your target, you can knock them down to make them hurt, or even just drag them somewhere nastily and toss them off a cliff if you really want to, if that's the kind of person your character is. But before I get into any of that, be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new content like this every week. And now, grappling. As I mentioned, 5e is so much simpler than a lot of other additions and systems, so here's the rundown. Whenever you make a melee attack, you can choose to try and grapple someone instead. You need at least one free hand in order to do this, so bear that in mind. You also can't grapple somebody two or more sizes larger than you, so that's, you, you can't just, uh, yeah. If it can't be done, it can't be done. Note that that's a single attack, not the attack action. So if you get multiple attacks, extra attack and so on, you can swap out any of those for a grapple attempt instead and make normal attacks with the rest. Whatever it is you're attempting to grapple gets to try and avoid your sick wrestling prowess through an athletics check, where they can try to outmuscle you or just try to slip away. They can also use an acrobatics check if they're trying to be a little bit more nimble about it. If their check is higher, they aren't grappled and nothing happens. If your check is higher, congrats, you successfully grappled somebody. But what does that mean for your opponent? Grappled is a condition in 5e, and fundamentally it's extremely simple. A grappled creature's speed becomes zero, and it can't benefit from any bonus to its speed. There are other rules and conditions that relate to weird situations, but that's pretty much all that matters. It doesn't look like a whole lot, right? It just looks like the target is in place, and that's about it. But there are some pretty amazing uses if you're a little creative, or perhaps just pretty devious. So what are the downsides of grappling? Well, as I mentioned earlier, grappling takes a free hand, so you can't do anything else with that hand that you're using to grapple. Basically, you can make all the one-handed attacks that you want, but you can't swing around a giant two-handed glaive or something like that, so I'm sure any violent barbarians out there would be pretty upset in that regard. You can also only move at half speed, and the other person that you're grappling is coming with you. You move at half speed while grappling, but you can drag and shove the other guy along in order to really humiliate them, if that's the kind of person you are. For most races, this means you're only moving about 15 feet, but that can be all you need in some situations. You can also stop grappling somebody at any time, no action required. So you can really drag someone over to a cliff and just kind of, you know, let them go to get that extra 15 feet of movement back. But that's all. You can still cast spells, make attacks, and do absolutely everything else you can normally do, just as long as you have a free hand. So let's say that you've been grappled. Escaping a grapple isn't super complicated, and there's a few ways to go about it, starting with just straight up attempting to escape. While grappled, you can use your action to try and escape, making a strength, athletics, or an acrobatics check in order to slip away, and then they will have to make a strength check in order to try and hold you in place. If your check is higher, you're able to escape, and if their check is higher, nothing happens, and you're still grappled. This way can be difficult if you're a scrawny wizard and the great big orc is grappling you and just swinging you around. It can also be a very serious downside if you're taking your whole action to do this. This means that while grappling only replaces an attack, escaping can essentially take a whole turn. Another method for escaping a grapple is to magically force your grappler away from you. So if you're in fact a scrawny wizard caught in a grapple, it's often way easier just to cast something that makes them go away for a second. Some of the more common early level spells that will end a grapple include Thunder Wave, Enlarge, Reduce Person, if they were already at least one size smaller than you, Gust of Wind, Misty Step, Blink, Gaseous Form, and so on if you really get more creative about it. Finally, you don't need to escape a grappler if the grappler is dead. A common question that I'm asked is if I need the grappler feat in order to grapple someone, and the answer is a resounding no. The grappler feat is also just terrible, and it's badly designed, and you can completely ignore it. It seems okay at first glance, but it really just lets you do things that you already can do by shoving someone. Shove and grapple work so well together that I almost wish they were a combined ability. It's not intuitive, but if you want to succeed as a grappler, you're going to be making a lot of shove attacks. 
A shove attack can replace one of your melee attacks just like a grapple attempt can. Whenever you make a melee attack, you can try to shove the person instead. Note that, again, this only takes a single attack, not the entire action. This means that you could easily grapple and shove in the same turn, assuming that you have at least two attacks. To attempt shoving somebody, make a strength athletics check, and the guy that you attempt to shove gets to try and avoid your blatant bullying by making an athletics check as well. Whoever's higher, well, succeeds in what they're setting out to do at this juncture. Your target can also attempt to weave out of the way by using acrobatics, so if they seem a little bit mousy or something like that, you may just not want to try and do it. That could end very embarrassingly for you. If you manage to succeed in shoving someone, you can either push the target five feet away from you, or you can knock the target prone. And it's that second one that we really want in most combat situations, prone. Because when someone's prone, that's when they really open themselves up to damage. Prone creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls, and an attack roll against a prone creature has an advantage if the attacker is within five feet of the creature. Otherwise, the attack roll has a disadvantage. But what if they can't move? Like, for example, if someone was, let's say, grappling them? This is the situation you've been working towards if your character has a grappling focus. A creature that is both grappled and prone is in serious trouble and is likely not going to be able to stick around for too much longer. Here's all the trouble that befalls them if they end up grappled and prone, starting with their attacks are all at disadvantage, and the dude on top has all of the advantage on their attacks against them. The prone person also cannot move, and because they can't move, they cannot stand up and end the prone condition. They can't move, and they can't stand up to end the prone condition. That's pretty awesome. They also can't do the dodge action, and they also can't move to do the withdraw action. With just two attacks available, a good grappler can run in and get a target prone and grappled all in the same turn. So how do I build one? There are a few things that you really want for a successful grappler and quite a few ways to go about it. In general though, you're going to want to be strong, gain advantage on strength checks, and get as many attacks as possible. Thankfully, building a strong character in D&D 5e is pretty simple, starting with just picking out a race that has a plus two bonus to strength whether it be a Goliath, a Mountain Dwarf, or a human that has all of the best things going for it. Goliaths also get a double carrying capacity, meaning that it's much easier to lug opponents around if you want to grapple something bigger. Mountain Dwarfs also gain a slew of abilities that can really help them out in a pinch, and humans get that sweet bonus feat for further combat prowess. The two best ways to go about this are either by being a Barbarian, as Rage gives you a free advantage on strength checks, or to gain access to the spell Enlarge Person. Dipping into the magical arts may not seem like a very grapplish thing to do, but Enlarged Person gives you advantage and lets you grapple far larger foes. Many of the martial class archetypes dip into the arcane, and it can be worth doing so for a dedicated grappler. If nothing else, there's always multiclassing. At bare minimum, you're going to need a class that gets at least one extra attack, which is practically all the martial ones. However, more attacks are better, and the fighter is probably going to be the best bet in this regard. The sweet extra bonus attack for fighters and all the extra feats make the fighter class one of the best options for a dedicated grappler. So I know I've said the word grapple and grappler a lot in this video, so I'm not going to linger too long on it, but I think that this fighting style is always very fun, and I think it can also act as great support for the rest of your group if you feel like your fighter might not be the real heavy hitter or the tank or anything like that. This is definitely a good specialty for you, and it can lead to a lot of really interesting situations. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new content like this every week. And if you or someone you know is building a really interesting grapple character, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. Or if a grapple character that you've made in the past has led to some sort of interesting debacle, I would definitely like to hear about that. Thanks again for watching. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice. And until next time, farewell. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss out.